It looks like you're referring to the early stages of the Korean War, specifically to the air battles that occurred on January 6, 1952. During this period, there were intense engagements between the American F-86 Sabres and the Soviet MiG-15s. The numbers reported by each side often varied, reflecting the chaotic nature of aerial combat and the tendency for both sides to inflate their claims. This particular day marked one of the significant clashes in the ongoing air conflict over Korea, with both sides experiencing losses and claiming victories. The air war was a crucial part of the Korean War as control of the skies had a major impact on the ground war and overall strategy. The first serious clashes of the 1952 took place on 6 January. A number of engagements took place between through the day, after which F-86 pilots claimed to have shot down five MiG-15s and Soviet MiG-15 pilots claimed to have shot down nine F-86. The May 15 and the F-86 were well-matched adversaries with similar performance. At high level, the May 15 BIS had the edge over the F-86E. It had a higher ceiling and a better rate of turn than the F-86, which it could also outclimb. May 15 formations would often fly as high as 50,000 feet, some 5,000 feet higher than the F-86 could manage, so the MiGs frequently had the advantage of altitude and could also break off an attack by climbing steeply back up beyond the reach of the F-86. Below 30,000 feet, the F-86 was the more maneuverable aircraft, although the MiG retained the superior rate of climb. Thus, while MiG would disengage by climbing, the preferred defensive maneuver by the F-86 would be a tight descending turn. A sustained turn of about 6 he was usually enough to escape from a MiG-15, not least because one advantage of the F-86 over the MiG-15 was that it provided anti-protection for the pilot, whereas the MiG did not. Soviet, Chinese, and Korean pilots found the effects of high maneuvering to be extremely fatiguing, so the lack of protection also affected the long-term alertness of pilots. The difference in tactics employed by each side reflected their different roles and experience levels. The role of the MiG-15 was to prevent UNC ground attack and bomber aircraft from attacking their targets, either by destroying them or making them jettison their weapons. With a massive number of aircraft available, of many inexperienced pilots, Soviet and UA MiG-15s flew in large numbers so that overwhelming force could be applied against their targets. MiG-15s would expect to fight any and all aircraft types operated by the UNC from the F-86 to the B-29. MiG-15s were usually seen in large regimental size formations, known to the UNC pilots as trains. These would be made up of flights of four to six aircraft stepped at different altitudes, with each formation covering the one beneath it. Soviet pilots, who included a number of World War II veterans, tended to be confident and aggressive, but they were constrained to remain north of the pyongyang wonsan line, though they rarely flew south of the Chomchon River, and they were prohibited from flying over the sea. Soviet MiG-15 regiments tended to be launched to intercept incoming raids, and they were vectored to their targets by GCI radar control. In contrast to the Soviets, the Chinese and Korean pilots were semi-trained, and many of them had fewer than 50 hours of jet flying. In general, they did not understand sufficient Russian to be able to use the Soviet radar service, so they tended to fly standing patrols and rely on visual sightings to locate their adversaries. The MiG-15 operators were aware that UN aircraft were prohibited from crossing the Yellow River, so they would climb to their operating altitude in the sanctuary area to the north of the river before setting off into May Alley. Chinese and Korean trains would often fly from the Suo, Supong Reservoir, on Yellow River to Pyongyang, and then turn northwards to Antung. F-86 pilots often commented that some MiG pilots seemed reluctant to engage in combat, and this was probably the case for two reasons. Firstly, by flying high above UNC aircraft, the pilots might often simply not see other aircraft, and secondly, being aware of their own inexperience, the Chinese pilots in particular might not wish to engage unless they had a clear advantage. The F-86 role in Korea was to provide a fighter screen between the MiGs and the large numbers of UNC fighter bombers flying daily low-level interdiction missions over the main supply route, which ran from Antung and Manpojin south through Sinanju to Pyongyang. By early 1952, F-86s were regularly launched in group strength, operating in flights of four. Takeoffs would be spaced three minutes apart between flights, launching a maximum effort sweep from Kimpo, using three squadrons of 16 aircraft, would take about 33 minutes. 
This ensured that Mine Alley was filled with F-86 patrolling at various altitudes and also that there were flights of fresh F-86 available to intercept the MiGs that had been scrambled to counter the first flight. In the area of operations, some flights would be at 42,000 to 45,000 feet, while others would fly below the condensation trail. While staying below the trail provided some altitude advantage, it meant that the pilots knew that any aircraft leaving the trail was hostile. It also meant that MiGs diving from above the trail would be easily spotted as they made their attacks. Once it was clear that a fight was about to begin, the F-86 would jettison their wing tanks and accelerate to combat speed of about max 0.95. The flight of F-86 would remain on patrol until the first aircraft of the element reached bingo or minimum fuel. This was enough to return from the Yellow River to Kimpo or Seoul, but it was not unusual for pilots to run out of fuel, and there was about one emergency landing at Kimpo every week. The first serious clash of 1952 occurred on January 6. A number of engagements took place throughout the day, after which F-86 pilots claimed to have shot down five MiG-15s and Soviet MiG-15 pilots claimed to have shot down nine F-86s. Chinese pilot Fan Wanzang of the 7th F, he also claimed to have shot down an F-86 that attempted to bounce off his formation leader. In fact, on that day, the UNC recorded only one F-86 loss and no Soviet MiG-15s were lost in combat. However, Stel TVG Stepanov, who had six kills to his name, was killed in a landing accident at Tantunkau. His aircraft overshot the runway, probably due to battle damage. During a month, two other Soviet aces were shot down in combat. Kept LK Shukin, 15 victories in Korea, on 7 January, and TSM Kramarenko, 13 victories in Korea, four days later. Both pilots ejected from their aircraft, but were wounded and took no further part in the conflict. The 5th AF also lost its highest score in ace pilot on 10 February when Major Gye Davis, commanding the 334th FIS, 4th FI, with 14 victories in Korea, was shot down in combat. There is still controversy over who killed Davis. The Chinese claimed it was Chinese pilot Zhang Jiwei of the 12th FT, while the Soviets claimed it was Lieutenant M. Averin of the 148th GVI AP. The Chinese also suffered heavy losses. Meng Jin, commander of the 7th FT, failed to return from combat with his F-86 over Tachin on January 11. 